In today's video, I want to share four wild examples of things that I coded with ChatGPT01. This model is a cut above the rest, and I want to share it with you today. So let's go ahead and dive in. I'm going to show you everything from how I create artificial life simulations to simple tools with Python to games and web development tools. For this first example, I created the game Fruit Ninja in less than 10 minutes. I generated all of these assets with AI, and then I removed the backgrounds, and it created this. As you can see, after some iterations, I now have a working version of Fruit Ninja or a parody of it. As you can see, when I hit the bombs, they explode and there's special power-ups and all kinds of different things that I added to this game. I didn't have too many errors. As you can see, I just got that blueberry and it gave me some more time. And when I slice a banana, things go in reverse. And I just started out with this simple prompt. Let's make Fruit Ninja with vanilla HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. I explained that there would be some levels. I told it that I was going to be using these source images, strawberry.png and bomb.png. And then what it generated was pretty solid, but I wanted to add some more features. So I continued iterating and I continued asking questions, asking it to add different fruits, different objects to the game. And at the end of the day, it was offering me updates and changes so that I could get this code just right. And I was able to generate this final code within 10 minutes. Next, I wanted to get a little bit more practical, so I created this dot grid generator. Now this dot grid generator can be used to create backgrounds for your websites that are animated and they have that amazing dot grid look. So if I open up this tool right here, as you can see, it's going to give me this dot grid by default that I can change the look and feel of. I like the smaller dots with a lot more spacing and a higher fade frequency so that the fading effect happens more often. Use the Pearland noise to make sure that we have a little bit of a random shine to these. And I'm gonna change the dot color to a gray to make it more subtle. We'll change the aspect ratio to one to one, and I can change the loop duration of the animation. I'm gonna hit download animation, and then it's going to download this animation for me. Now, right off the bat, you can't really see a whole lot going on. It's definitely moving a little bit, but it's hard to see with these being so light. But as you can see, I used this for my personal website and it actually turned out pretty solid. You can see these dots moving around ever so slightly and it puts off a really elegant effect. To achieve this, I had a pretty long conversation with ChatGPT. First, I just said create an animated SVG dot grid generator that you can change the dot color, background, dot frequency, etc. I said add a Perlene noise toggle and add opacity for the dots based on the Perlene noise. Perlene noise should slowly move over top of it. And Perlene noise is basically just like random bits of fog is what it looks like. So it's a way to generate these random sections and this very turbulent or random looking uh, mask over top of those dots. So it's basically just changing the opacity underneath that noise if I used that noise function. And I wanted it to be drifting and looping so that this would just loop over and over again and you could watch the same thing and it wouldn't look like it's changing videos or starting over. You'll notice this theme here. I will say to use a single HTML file with inline JavaScript and CSS because that is a simple way to create these files. So that's typically what I say. But when I gave it this information here, it thought for 86 seconds. And it took a ton of time strategizing and thinking through the problem of creating this tool. And then it gave me the first generation. It tells me exactly where to save it and how to open it. it. Gives me the features, gives me the notes. And then I was having issues with the downloads. So I just told it to fix that portion of the animation because everything else was working fine. It just wasn't working once I downloaded the files. So it went through and it actually fixed that very quick. And now I'm able to use this incredible tool to create some pretty amazing animations. As you can see, if you bump up the noise scale, you can see what's going on a whole lot better and you can change the noise speed as well just to get a bit of a different look. Overall, working on this project was a ton of fun and you can get a ton of neat looking backgrounds using this method. Before you go any further into this video, I have something I need to tell you about, and that is the AI Foundations community. This is where I learn everything about AI and where I also teach AI alongside my brother who runs a channel on YouTube called AI Foundations. 
We make AI content for free here on YouTube, and we always have because we love to do it. We love to share these awesome tools. But if you want to up your network and get around some amazing people, I mean, we have a guy that built an app that has 300 million downloads. We have many multi, multi millionaires that join our calls and just talk about their businesses and how AI is affecting the landscape. And then we have a lot of just everyday people as well that are just trying to figure out how AI fits into their work. No matter who you are, you're welcome at AI Foundations, and I highly recommend you join AI Foundations. Use the link below before the price goes up. The next thing that I created were these 2D top-down simulations that have biomes with changing seasons and migration patterns where these different animals or these different creatures move around throughout the year and they have different activities that they perform. Now, this has a neural network running underneath each and every one of these different creatures. So if I click on one, I can see the neural network weights that they were born with based on their parents' genes. And I can also see their energy, age, lifespan, health, etc. This one just died. And they die quite quickly, but they learn over time how to migrate. I can change the speed here and I can see these migratory patterns in action as the seasons change right here. And I can see the average temperature. So when it gets really cold, they like to go up in this corner here. So watch when it goes negative 50, they all kind of congregate up here and here. Now, the interesting thing is, is right when you start this, these creatures just run straight to the corner and they don't know what they're doing. But by the time they've gone through 48 hours of generations, this is about what they're looking like. If I click in the swamp here, you can see that it has food sources of plants and insects. And over here on land, it has just plants. If I go into the tundra, it has none of that. I also created another version of this simulation that was a little bit more advanced, but the erosion got out of control and it destroyed everything. So now we just have a bunch of carnivores running around eating all of the plant eaters because when they spawn in, they have nothing to eat and the carnivores are basically just sharks having a feeding frenzy. Here's another rendition with a bunch of ocean creatures. And if I up the speed on this, you'll notice that they sort of have these migratory patterns as well as the seasons are changing. Now, occasionally I'll have this problem where I have a code base that I'm trying to share with an LLM, but it doesn't know where the code is. It doesn't know where it's lined up. So what I do is I create tools using Python to interpret exactly what my coding files should say to the LLM. For instance, one of the things I did was I created a line number generator. Let me show you how that one works. So this was just a one shot prompt. I said, create a Python app that can receive copy pasted code and then retain the formatting and indentation, but add line numbers to the code that's been copy and pasted. This should receive copy pasted code or written code, identify the syntax, then add line numbers so that I can copy and paste them and give them to the LLM. So this is pretty simple. I just have to open this with VS code. And since this is Python, I can just hit run code up here. And as you can see, it opens up this nice little simple window and it asks for the input code. So if I paste the input code, it doesn't have line numbers in here. It does here, so I know exactly where I'm at with my coding. But if I'm working with an LLM and I need further instruction, how do I get those line numbers? Well, I can hit add line numbers and now I can copy and paste this and send it over to an LLM. Similar to this, I also created this tree app. So what this one does is it creates a file tree and puts all the code in it. I can select the folder of one of my projects. I can select the depth I want to go into it in terms of folders. And then I can select if I want the content of the files. I'm going to keep the content of the files and generate the tree. And as you can see, it's going to basically generate a file tree and it's going to show all of the internal code going on inside of my project. It's going to show all the files so that the LLM can get a good idea of what's going on when I copy and paste this over to it. You can also do this for things like QR codes. So if I hit my shortcut here, I can open up my QR code app and this one just takes a URL. So if I type in youtube.com and you were to take a picture of that, it would work and you can even add a color to it if you wanted to. And if I hit generate QR code, it's going to save this to my local files so that I can actually use this for marketing and things like that. 
I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into some of the projects that I've created using O1. It's been a blast using this new model because I can just go straight from prompts to code and it tells me how to implement it on my computer as well. But if you're still a beginner with ChatGPT O1, then I highly recommend checking out this video right here so that you can get a better idea and a better understanding of how you can create stuff like this. All right, we'll see you in the next one.